Things aren't going quite as planned. We stopped by the store on the way to the lake because everyone was thirsty. None of us really wanted to pay for our drinks, though, so we, um... We might have stolen a little bit of money from our producers. So now everything is gradually decaying since we don't have the budget to cover today. I just hope things turn out better than my YouTube video is. My friends are staying at Yiyar River while I'm at the lake just a few minutes away. As I film the lake, the quality steadily declines. Barely recognisable as a lake anymore. By the time I reach the lake, my friends are pretty far behind me, hidden behind a few blurs in the scenery. I'm getting uncomfortable with the idea of me holding this camera while I navigate this terrain. I can barely see where I'm walking. But maybe I can spin this into something positive. I can claim it's paranormal shenanigans happening. I go ahead and set my camera down and wait a few seconds for it to adjust before somersaulting into frame. Yo, 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 yo! What's up, my homies? It's Chase the Ghost Hunter here with you again. Yeah, there'd be like spooky, scary ghost shit happening up in here. Ooh, everything's all blurry and shit. Y'all gotta trust me, yo. It ain't my camera that's fucking up. Honest. What you be thinking it is? My money-making home skillets? Speaking of skillets, buy the slightly new Sprinkly's 5 and 2 razor. Don't ask what that has to do with skillets. I don't know. Shaving. Don't forget to comment, rate, sub, dom, follow, twitch, switch, subscribe, and perscribe. I go on for approximately 4.938 minutes until the battery runs out. It's time to head back to my friends now. My friends' voices sound different as I get closer, like they're low quality. It sounds like they're fighting too. In that thing, I could bully all day. How am I a bully? And all I did was tell you guys not to steal. Apparently it would have been better if you hadn't. How would that be better? It sounds a lot more serious than our usual squabbles, so I quicken my pace. They seem to quiet down a bit once they see me coming. TJ's off to the side, poking a de dead snake with a stick, occasionally throwing a rock at it. Carl snacks on a few Oreos and the packaging they came in. He's rubbing his tummy and smiling, unaffected by what's going on around him. Leo's got a gun pointed at Flynn while Jenna points her finger at the lizard menacingly. Hey, what's wrong? Flynn won't change it back. You mean the background? No one answers. I start to worry if maybe the remaining funds were so low that everyone's dialogue was removed. Um, I'm going to go for a quick swim. Haven't been in the water for a while. I haven't had a chance to swim since I got here. Being an otter, I needed to swim at least once a day or I'd go crazy. Though I suppose some would argue that I already wham. Flynn offers a beer to Leo and willingly accepts it before lowering his gun. Jenna continues to point. He offers her a beer as well, but she continues to point, not budging at all. I also point at Flynn, wondering if he'll offer me a beer too. That's when I noticed something strange about him. What? He holds his hands in front of his face in shock. Flynn? What in the world is going on? Low art budget, maybe? I can't help but snicker at how ridiculous he looks. Oh, ha ha. This isn't funny. I'm not even the one who stole from them. You guys did. I ignore him as I seductively strip off my clothes and head to the river bank. Sadly, no one looks at me. What's the point of stripping if no one watches? It's okay, though, because I still get to swim. I stick my foot in and holy moly, the water feels orgasmic. <laughs> I wish I could explain it, but it's something only an otter could understand. I swim back and forth a few times before finally diving in. Strange. The music sounds different. It's lower in quality. This is definitely Flynn's fault. <laughs> he definitely had beer with him. Why couldn't he let us have some? If he did, we wouldn't have been forced to steal money to pay for drinks. Well, it doesn't matter now. I've got plenty of lake water to drink after all. It does feel amazing to swim again. 
Back when we were kids, I used to give everyone rides. Aside from my habit of slapping people and throwing their stuff off into the sunset, it was the one thing that made me stand out. Leo was the crazy gun guy. TJ was the one we must protect. Carl was the Oreo and internet guy. Jenna was the confusing one. Flynn was... well... Flynn. I feel like there was someone else, but they weren't important. I realised they'd been down here a few seconds, so the others are probably worried about me. I decided I should go back up and show them I'm okay, so I slowly let myself float back up towards the surface, trying to stay in the same spot. When I surface, it's pretty quiet. For a second, I wonder if everyone is just gone. Of course, that's silly, and it just takes a second for me to adjust the blurry landscape before I can see them. Flynn is the only one who bothers to look at me. I guess he's the only one who cares. You okay, Chase? You were gone a whole five seconds. His tone is warm and caring, but I don't let that fool me. There's obviously hidden malice behind his words. What the hell was his deal? Fuck you, Flintstone. <laughs> You're just jealous that you can't swim. <laughs> hey guys, I think something's wrong with Jada now. <laughs> Cause you'll sink like a stone. <laughs> Oh god. <clears throat> I don't know. She looks the same to me. Stupid face and everything. What? <laughs> don't cry, TJ. Sad face. Here, have an Oreo. Happy face. Oh wow. You'll give TJ and Oreo, but you won't give anyone else one. Yay! <laughs> I'm special. Oh, that's TJ on the back as the link chows down on the Oreo. See? Oreos make everything better, don't they? Kitty face. Oh yeah, Chase was like our own little submarine. I shift my attention to the Fennec, hearing my name and enjoying the attention. Oh no, it's spreading. Leo freaks out, but I ignore him. Jenna has the right idea. Let's stop worrying about all this and just focus on me. How can you not care about what's happening? Everyone turns to look at Flynn. His expression is a mix of panic, confusion and hostility. Or maybe it's just his new look that makes him look like this. The lizard takes a deep breath like he's about to give a big speech. Leo smacks him over the head, however. Then... Ow! What the fuck? All I was going to do was talk. You know what, Flynn? I think we should. Isn't that a part of the reason that we're here? Thank you, Jenna. <laughs> 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 At least someone here is willing to listen to me. <laughs> Jenna remains to this day the only living person who's willing to stick up for Flynn. Fine. Then whatever it is you want to say then. Flynn looks sad. Upset. It's hard to tell which. I can't tell if he's about to burst into tears or break someone's skull open. This place, this whole place is messed up. <laughs> I don't know. Seems pretty normal to me. How can you even say that? With my muzzle. <laughs> Flynn gives a deep sigh, almost shaking. This was a stupid fucking idea. You know what, Flynn? If you'd be a little more open, tell us like what's on your mind. We'd be able to avoid a lot of this kind of stuff. I'm trying, okay? <laughs> Flynn swivels and glares at Carl. You just sit there and eat Oreos all day and pretend everything is okay. <laughs> Take a look around you. Everything is falling to pieces and it's like you don't even care. Carl stares back up at Flynn impassively, though he hunches in on himself a bit further. Flynn, don't do this right now. You. You just told me to, though. You know what? Whatever. 
You have no idea what's going on around you either. You're just as bad as Carl. And what about your family? You're <laughs> corporate. Right <laughs> You think I... <laughs> Stop it, Flynn. And you. You call yourself a top, but you key mash verbally? You're just the same as the rest. Why don't we ask Chase here, who really was the top in your relationship? Theo's ears fall flat, and he sticks his tail between his legs. Okay. Maybe I'm going a bit too far. Sorry. I just... Theo puts his hand on Flynn's shoulder and nods. All is forgiven. (laughs) (laughs) What? (laughs) It works for everybody? (laughs) And Chase. It's obvious you want to bone all of us. Except for Jenna, of course. You're Mars. literally waving your dick around right now. <laughs> Seriously, put your clothes back on. It's awkward how <laughs> talk to you. <laughs> it's like it's 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 not like you're hot or something. Flynn stops, then exhales. His face does look a bit red though. Flynn now turns the point towards TJ, but Leo steps in between them. For a second, everything goes back to looking normal again. It almost feels wrong at this point. (laughs) Leo senses it too as he comes up with an idea to fix the natural order of things. Before Flynn and TJ can react, Leo yanks Flynn towards TJ. (laughs) As TJ begins to cry as Flynn winds up poking his eye with his claw intentionally. Wow, Flynn, how could you do that to poor TJ? Leo's right. Flynn definitely did this on purpose. Flynn is actually a psychopathic eye poker. <laughs> See, I told you. <laughs> I'm not the only one who sees Flynn for who he is. Jenner and Carl both grasp, grasp in horror as TJ's eye has been poked. Flynn takes a deep breath and tries to calm himself down. You guys are always doing stuff like this. You're always setting me up to be the bad guy. Look, I just want to know what happened to Sydney. You guys still remember him, right? All of us give him a blank stare. <laughs> you you guys don't remember Sydney, our childhood friend who mysteriously drowned, and TJ was the only one who saw what happened. It's dead quiet. Damn, I knew there was someone I'd forgotten about. Sydney the moron? Flynn holds up a hand towards me, now focusing his attention on me. Flynn only now remembers to remove his finger from TJ's eye. (laughs) Sorry, TJ. Flynn steps backward, but Leo's there to grab the back of Flynn's shirt and flame into TJ. (laughs) 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 <laughs> we all glare at Flynn as he lands on our poor TJ. What the hell, Leo? Flynn, I swear to God, I will end you for hurting TJ. <laughs> Everyone except TJ is swearing now, staring at Flynn. <laughs> Flynn gets up, glaring up at Leo. He looks about ready to snap, but decides against it. Flynn looks like he really wants to say something right now. It doesn't matter what I do. You're all going to hate me anyway. Flynn runs off towards a trail that goes back to Echo. Is he crying? God damn it, Flynn. (laughs) I hate you. 
<laughs> Finn keeps running, and it's pretty clear that he isn't coming back. I raise a paw and rub it over my eyes. What was he doing? What reason did he have to run off and cry? He's tall. He's not meant to be sad. <laughs> now I'm starting to feel a little guilty. Did Leo go too far? And poor TJ, his eye just got poked. I mean, it's not like Flynn left a mark or anything. TJ's eye actually looked fine now, aside from the usual tears. I look to the left and see that TJ's skipping around, chasing a frog. Carl's still sitting down, but now it looks like he's stuffing his face with as many Oreos as possible. He was walking off down another trail, cursing while Jennifer pots him. I stand there next to my chair and decided. Jenna and I watched Jenna's tail disappear through the sagebrush. I headed down to the same trail I'd used to get to Lake Emma. I can't see shit. Lake Emma really did look terrible. Maybe it was a bad idea to come this way. Still, I need to talk to one of them. I'm a little worried about Leo. I've never seen him act the way he did back there. I can vaguely make out Leo's body sitting down next to a rock by the shore. Bittersweet memories flood in. I used to play with rocks as a kid, and this one was no different. I miss playing with rocks. It's weird like that. Every memory I have of this place is dreamy and gold-tinged, but always has a hint of sadness about it, no matter what the situation was. Jen is standing in front of Leo, her arms folded as she talks to him. I can't see his face, for his posture is sagging and his ears are down. I imagine Jen is scolding him for hurling Flynn at TJ. We all had our fun letting Flynn know how much of a mean bully he was, but hurting TJ in the process was not okay. I can see Jen is getting annoyed, but then she says something and Leo turns his head to look back at me. I seize up for a second, but Jen is beckoning me with her paw while Leo isn't looking. I start stumbling over the blur blurry rocks towards him as Leo looks down at his phone and Jenna starts walking towards me. Just talk to him. He'll listen to you. Talk to him. I'm gonna go talk to Leo because he's tall and buff. <laughs> she passes by me, going back towards the trail. Sure, he'll probably listen to me, but I have no idea what I should say. The rocks are actually hard to navigate, especially when you don't have any protection for your feet. I'm almost the boulder when my foot catches on an edge of rock and I yelp and fall forward, knees first into the sharp rocks. Bargle, bargle! Pain shoots up my legs and my eyes clench shut as I cringe silently. The fuck was that sound? <laughs> I hurt my legs so often it doesn't surprise anyone anymore. Uh, I, uh, <laughs> it just came out. Theo laughs and reaches over with a paw which I grab onto and pull myself up with. I make my way around him, being a little more careful about where I put my feet as I position myself next to him by the rock. I pick up the rock and drag it through the sand, making a pattern. Hey, um, since I'm nude, I was thinking... Maybe we should... Um, <laughs> never mind. Leo's giving me an odd look, and I'm not quite sure why. I can't tell if he's upset with what just happened at the river, or if it's something else. I gaze into his eyes, and I swear he's looking deeper into me than usual. His expression then eases up as he smiles. You seem nervous, Otter. Something on your mind. There's no need to be shy or uneasy, you know. Meh. It's nothing. It's just been a long time since we hung out. I just hope this week doesn't turn out to be a disaster. I continue rubbing the rocks through the sand, not paying attention to what I'm doing with it. Something about the texture of the rock against the sand felt relaxing. Hey, um, do you remember Sydney? Not really. Why? <laughs> Flynn seemed really upset about him. But I barely remember him at all. He said he drowned or something, right? Yeah, you think I would remember that, but it bothers me that I don't. Forget about it. It's not important. 
Leo's right. I doubt we'll ever hear anything else about him, so it's best not to think about it. Didn't you scrape your knee? Why there's no mark or anything? I shrug. Yeah, probably not enough funding to draw cuts and scrapes on us. <laughs> no budget for you're... reactive sprites. <laughs> <laughs> but you are... I guess that makes sense. I notice Leo sneak his hand into his pocket, bringing up an Oreo to his muzzle before I slap it out of his hand. What are you doing, Leo? What? I just wanted an Oreo. Why'd you slap it away? I suppose that's a good question. It's not like he's smoking or something. What harm can come from an Oreo? Uh... Unable to think of anything to say, I break the silence by grabbing Leo's phone and tossing it into the water. <laughs> that should take his mind off of it. Hey! <laughs> Hi! Leo rolls his eyes. I was hoping my playful nature would cheer him up, but it seems to be doing the opposite. <laughs> Why the fuck would you do that? He reaches for his gun and points it at the lake. <laughs> Leo? I know what he's trying to do, but it won't work. Leo, you can't solve all of your problems with guns. Of course I can. I just have to show the leg who's the boss. Then I get my phone back. Trust me, Otto. <laughs> sure enough, his phone comes flying back to him, proving me wrong once again. <laughs> right. <laughs> I forgot you could do that. Leo sets his gun down and gives a happy smirk. See? I told you. <laughs> yeah, well, what happens if one day you can't solve your problems like that? Leo shakes his head at me. It's worked on everything so far. This is already familiar. Leo can't accept that his methods are uh, wrong. I look down at the sand I've been running the rock through. Fuck. I wrote my social security number in the sand. <laughs> Why does this always happen? <coughs> I stand up and start kicking at the sand to erase what I wrote. It obviously didn't work on me. What do you mean? Don't forget, I left you to go off to college with Jenna. Ah, but you are here now, aren't you? <laughs> well, yeah, but I... So I haven't lost you. I let out an exasperated sigh. Yeah, but what if I say no to you at some point? Would you have walked up to me naked if you were going to say that? What? Oh shit, I still haven't put my clothes <laughs> back on after going for that swim. Why has no one said anything until now? <laughs> it's okay, Shula. I know what you want. I I mean... <laughs> I feel my face turn red. I must look like I only came over to get laid by my ex or something. Actually, I guess that's not completely wrong, though. Shut up. Leo rolls his eyes. Oh, he got otter. You can't even admit your own feelings for me. Hey, I just... I fidget a bit, becoming increasingly uncomfortable without my clothes. You just what? I notice Leo reach for his gun, so I put my foot on it. Leo, I already told you, I don't want to have a gun pointed at me. When I look down, I notice he wasn't reaching for his gun, but rather his phone. Well, this is awkward. There's nothing like accusing someone of pointing a weapon at you when they're just flirting with you. I suck at this. He's not saying anything, and that only makes the situation more uncomfortable. Maybe I can play this off. Yeah, that's what I'll do. I'll just come up with a witty joke to lighten the mood. Finally, I speak up. Um, uh, I, I thought your phone was gone. What the fuck, Chase? <laughs> He's staring at me like I'm the biggest idiot in the universe right now. Oh, well, you know, I mean, uh, you can use both of them to solve problems, right? Leo finds it to be a perfectly reasonable explanation, thankfully. 
Right, I forget not everyone knows as much about guns as I do. I can teach you if you want. Teach me what? Uh, okay, sure. Take a look right here. Leo points the trigger on his gun and then signals to his phone. What is he doing? A gun has a trigger, a phone doesn't. That's the difference between them. <laughs> Hold up. <laughs> How stupid does he think I am? Does he actually believe I don't know the difference? Whatever, I'll just play along. I put my paws together and nod. Hey, you learn fast. Leo places his paw on my head and pets me. It feels a bit demeaning. Still, it also feels nice receiving positive attention like this. I go ahead and press up against his hand. You know, I miss you, Chase. I missed him as well. I considered whether or not I want to stay in Echo, but... That would make life too easy on us. <laughs> hey, Leo. Yes, Chase? We should spend more time together this week. Leo has a wide grin on his face. Of course, Otto. Maybe we can actually learn to cook this time. Hey, I can cook. I always have. I'm an expert at setting up the microwave to two and a half minutes. How else are you, go are you meant to cook food? He can't seriously think that's how to cook, can he? I'll make breakfast burrito for you sometime. They're really good. You just gotta be careful with the eggs. I feel bad for him if he's been eating nothing but microwave food for the past however many years. Leo? Leo wraps his arm around me and I turn my head to rub my nose into his chest. I can smell his musk under the heavy deodorant. It's a familiar smell I like. What is it, Chase? He leans his chin on the top of my head. The first time since I left Echo, everything feels right. You smell nice. Oh? Tell me more. Typical, Leo. You can't give him a compliment without him wanting an essay to go along with it. I really don't know how to describe it. You just smell really familiar, and it makes me happy. Cute. Leo's tail starts to wag as he's enjoying my company. I wonder... I grab onto his moving tail, feeling playful. Little did I realize my mistake. Chase! His tail sends me <laughs> hurling up into the air faster than I can react. <laughs> Leo! I'm high enough in the air that I can see our motel from here. Don't worry, Chase. I got you. As I begin to fall, Leo makes a dash towards me, sliding into the sand as he barely catches my fall. Yeah, and You okay, Chase? I'm highly impressed with Leo being able to catch me as I fell from the sky. The turn of events only makes me feel more attracted to him. Yeah, I'm okay now. Thanks to you, you big wolf hunk. Who he? Uh, what were you thinking? How was I supposed to know that would happen? You used to do this all the time, remember? Vague images rush back to me of Leo trying to shoot the air as I was hurled up into the air while Flynn was yelling at Leo to stop. Be more careful next time, okay? Ah, okay. I've had weirder things happen. It's not like this was the first. Leo gets up and perches me on his shoulder. You ready to head back? I'm ready if you are. I'll text Jenna and TJ and let them know we are ready to head up. Maybe we'll drive by Flynn on the way. I almost lose my balance on his shoulder, but Leo stabilizes me before I can fall. I got you, Otto. You got nothing to worry about with me around. I'll hold you to those words. Leo's yelling at me. He's telling me I need to make a decision. I tell him I'm not ready, though. 
It's complicated and I don't know what I want yet. He doesn't understand my view. He pulls out a rocket launcher. I've never seen him this angry before. Why does he care though? Suddenly his fur changes to match the colours of Winrower's logo. You've had enough time to decide. You will pay! To be continued. Not everyone has the uh, update yet. I have that. I'm I'm not late and gay, so I have the update. <laughs> Who doesn't? I guess Does somebody I... have the update. Yes. Oh, so everyone has it. Yeah. Oh well, we can continue then. Okay. <clears throat> Peyton Mall is tiny compared to the one in Pueblo where I go to school. It's only got one floor and maybe 20 stores. You wouldn't know if you looked at it though. It looks like it has two floors, but it doesn't. Trust me. Still, it wasn't a bad place to hang out back when I was in high school, mostly because it was a place to get away from the heat. So where do you guys want to go first? First? We only need to go to one. Jenna, we're not going to buy you a manga. We need, we need to help Chase buy Carl a present. He can't do this on his own. <sighs> he knows what he likes. It's fine. Well, all right, laser it is. Wait, what? What do we even buy him for his birthday? There's nothing but comics and porn here. That's why we are here. If we all get him different types of porn, we bound to like at least one, right? Why not just give him me? I'm the best present anyone could receive, after all. But you are mine. No one else can have you. Porn it is, then. Porn? Really? You know he's just gonna eat it. We both look at him. If that's how he likes it, is that a problem? TJ's been in a bit of a mood ever since he woke up this morning. I think he's feeling thrown off by everything looking normal again. He's just salty that he isn't roasting on the trail right now. Jenna, on the other hand, looks completely different. Not that it matters. (laughs) We got roasted yesterday. I don't need a roast again today. TJ reaches for his pocket to get his phone, but stops himself as he notices me stare. Does he think I'm going to throw it or something? Yeah, sure. Well, Leo's driving us halfway after this, so you're going to have to get yourself BBQ. Taking you with me so you don't destroy anything in town. At this point, Leo turns to me, wrapping his arm around me. Who needs to go on a hot hiking trail when you've got a hot wolf? Oh, you. Jenna looks upset with Leo for flirting with me. What's wrong? Jealous? Of course she is. Who wouldn't want you after all? Jenna walks up with a clenched fist but manages to stub her toe on a part of the floor that's raised. That's got her... Eventually, everyone scatters. I'm not sure what I should get him. I'm sure he'll eat anything I get. Hmm, should I look at trading cards or look at Bibles? (laughs) Bibles. Let's take a look at the Bible selection at this comic book porn store. (laughs) Let me just just go back and... Past the midget porn. <laughs> oh, hold on. This is the interracial incest section. Excuse me. Sorry, pardon me. <laughs> Let's see. Food is cuck holding. I'm getting closer. Here we are. Bibles. <laughs> right here in the B section. You could have got there much quicker. You just needed to take the interracial gangbang section twice. <laughs> no, the Asian section were too far. <laughs> Go back. 
I move further towards the back of the store to the religious section, which is where TJ is. He's holding on to a Bible he picked up off the shelf. I've never understood why this store had a wall full of Bibles. <laughs> then again, they seem to appear out of nowhere. I remember finding three in my car the last time I cleaned it out. <laughs> what you got there? <laughs> I noticed TJ isn't even looking at the Bible wall. Instead, he's looking to the wall next to us where Leo is. The sex toy wall. Do you think Jesus will judge me if I'm looking? Or if I'm holding the Bible? <laughs> uh, um. He looks over at me, waiting for an answer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yes, Lion Jesus will, so you should stay away from sex toys and stay pure. <laughs> oh. He looks down and pouts. Hey, cheer up. There's always fanfic. <laughs> I hear a sound and notice Jenna running at us with a collar and leash in hand. What is she... TJ! No! Jenna rushes off with TJ, keeping him away from the impure sex toy section. Where did she get that collar from? Where did she get the leash from? How did she attach it to TJ so fast? She's always said she'd be ready to protect TJ at a moment's notice, but this is more extreme than I expected. I shrug as I walk over to Leo. As I make my way over to him, he looks like he doesn't want to be here. He's always been uncomfortable around things like this. I don't know what half of this stuff is. I'm sure that he'll eat whatever you get him. <laughs> I don't think so. What, do you think he'll actually use some of it instead of just cramming it into his snout? Maybe... Leo picks up one of the free samples off the shelf. It's a small metal contraption of some sort with an open lock attached to it. It looks like a key is supposed to go with it. Somebody probably stole it, though. Leo sniffs it before setting it back down. Maybe we should look somewhere else. I'm about to agree, but then something catches my eye. What is a weapon doing over here? I spot a small blade lying on the shelf. What kinds of crazy things are people doing, doing during sex these days? I shrug. Death fetish, maybe? Leo frowns, but I grab it off the shelf for Carl. It's a pretty cool blade. I think it'll make a good present. We should say it's from both of us. <laughs> I swing it around a bit and end up slicing through one of the nearby Bibles. Crap. That's going to be a life of a bad luck, isn't it? <laughs> Whoa. Calm down, boys. Jenna walks up behind us with a leash in hand. TJ following behind her, trying to take off the collar Jenna's put on him. What are you two doing? Leo notices TJ trying to, to catch a glimpse at the sex toy, so he moves over in front of him to block his view. Sorry, can't let you look at these. TJ lowers his ears. Maybe when you're older. Hey, I'm 19. How much older do I have to be? He's kidding, TJ. Yeah, we're never going to let you lose your innocence. TJ whines a bit, uncomfortable in the collar. The rest of us ignore it. I walk up to the counter to pay for the weapon, but then get an idea. I have a weapon and he's an arm. Needless to say, I didn't have to pay. <laughs> I'm just saying, if I can take it for free, why shouldn't I? TJ's finally managed to detach the leash from his new collar. 
I can't get this off. Why would you want to? I have to admit, he looks adorable struggling and failing to take it off. I wonder if he realizes he can just undo the buckle in the back. There, there, it's okay. I gave him a light pat on the head. How do you think we all do in zombie attack? That question come out of nowhere. Why do you ask? <laughs> I look to Leo, who always has a gun or 12 with him. You would definitely survive. TJ, on the other hand. The power of Christ repels the undead. I read about it in a history book once. I keep telling you that was a D&D &D manual, not a history book. But you said... I remember that Carl and Jenna replaced TJ's history book in school with a D&D &D manual because it was less bloody than actual history. Hmm. Uh, actually, you're right. Jenna would have no trouble surviving either. Oh, really? Jenna's eyes light up with Leo's compliment. Pretty sure I'm faster than you, Leo. Leo nods. You'd be right. I don't need speed when I have guns. Leo's always been good at avoiding conflict with Jenna. <laughs> that doesn't stop her from attempting to force the competitiveness down his throat, though. Jenna tugs at the leash she's holding, not realizing it's no longer attached to TJ. I can't help but laugh at her attempt. Hey, Jenna, you should race over to the lamppost over there. All right, to that lamppost. Who is she raising? Uh huh. Doesn't matter. Go, 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 go! <laughs> Jenna runs off into the distance, competing against nobody. She seems very determined to win. We all cheer her on, telling her there's no way she can lose. She reaches the lamppost and celebrates her victory over nobody. Afterwards, she darts back towards us, leash still in hand. Just before she reaches us, the other end of the leash gets caught on Leo's car, causing her to lose her balance and fall onto Leo. Ah! TJ gasps and covers his eyes. Oh my gosh. I run over to Leo and Jenna, <laughs> tripping over the curb myself and landing on them. <laughs> the last member of our group, TJ, runs over to us as well, though unlike the rest of us, he doesn't fall. Well, are you okay? He helps pull me up and I get out of the way of Jenna and Leo. <laughs> Owie! I think I scraped my leg. Jenna quickly jumps up, followed by Leo. Wow, you okay, Leo? I'm fine. Be more careful next time. Both of you. Nope. What, what do you mean by nope? I shrug. I didn't feel like giving an explanation behind my responses. Jenna starts on hooking a leash from Leo's car, cursing about how it got stuck. When she finishes, she puts an arm around TJ and points at him. Well, now you know who you're more likely to survive with in a zombie apocalypse. Chase, remember it. Was she implying TJ would be the best choice? I always figured he'd be the first to die. Right, okay, yeah. Uh, we should probably go <laughs> before we break anything. Sure enough, Leo's passenger side door breaks off as I open it. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops! <laughs> the drive back is only a little awkward. Jenna hooks the leash back onto TJ. The rest of us allow it to happen. It should make their hike easier as it'll be harder for them to get separated. We drop TJ and Jenna off in the middle of nowhere, figuring they'll be able to find the hike and trail on their own. Once we're alone in the car, Leo starts messing around with the CD player. You might remember this. Oh no, is he about to do what I think he's about to do? I prepare myself. As the music fills the car, I'm overcome with the emotion. Jesus, is this even considered music? What is this? <laughs> <laughs> Leo's grinning at me, occasionally glancing towards the road. I definitely remember it. You're so into this stuff. 
<laughs> it's a beautiful and terrifying, I don't know. My mind just pulled in so many different directions by the insane and the rain. Help! Come for me! It's so beautiful! the best music I've ever listened to. It probably conveys what my relationship with you is like. I forgot how great your taste in music is. <laughs> As we drive, we all sing along with it. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, we pull up to Leo's old ranch style house. I've been holding on to his door the whole drive to prevent it from falling completely off on the way here. Leo parks and I let go of the door, watching it drop to the dirt. I'm busy staring at the driveway, thinking about all the times I've walked across it, when a gravelly voice pulls me from my reverie. Get off my lawn. I jump and look to the right, spotting a thin and angry looking raccoon. He's standing next to some bushes, pouring orange juice on them. I can't tell if he's trying to water the bushes or kill them. <laughs> Behind the raccoon is an old and rusty looking trailer home. Thinking back, I'm pretty sure the really old mouse used to live here. This guy's a raccoon. Now is that possible? Didn't you used to be a mouse? Did you shapeshift like a wizard? <laughs> I hear Leo walking quickly around the front of his truck to stand next to me. Chase, this is Kudzu. No, he's not a shapeshifter. Hmm? You do realize people can move, right? Leo puts his arm around both me and Kudzu, dragging us into an awkward three-way hug. Kudzu willingly joins in on the hug as well, which surprises me. For your chase, huh? I stand there awkwardly as the two hug me, not sure what to say. I notice Leo's tail is wagging though, and I can't help but reach for it. No! Kudzu quickly pushes me to the ground, landing on top of me. Ack! Kudzu! What are you doing? The raccoon gets up off of me and dusts himself off. He was about to grab your tail. Really, Chase? You learned yesterday what happens if you do that. I just... Uh... Well, let's just go inside. The raccoon watches us all the way to the door. I swear I see him undoing his belt buckle as Leo closes the door. <laughs> <laughs> really, Chase? Sorry, your tail just looks so fun to grab when it's wagging like that. I like seeing you happy. I look around the house. This place is a mess. Trash is all over the floor and it looks like he hasn't cleaned since I was last here. It makes sense, I guess. What reason did he have to clean up if no one ever came over? Oh, he got her. Be more careful next time. But I... Okay. He's hot, yeah? What? Kudzu? Yeah, you saw how he saved you from your bad decision. He's always doing that. <laughs> <laughs> Leo sets the bags down on the kitchen table, pulling out a cake and gifts. We got a cake? When, when did this happen? <laughs> Uh, you know, we have it now, too. So does it matter? Uh, I, I guess not. So could you tell me more about your neighbor? Leo ruffles through some plastic cups and gifts. I forget what country he's original from. He is hot and protective of people he likes. Uh, so he's basically a better version. Lies. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, how old TJ is again? I think he's 20. His <laughs> age got retconned. He used to be 19 like last Sunday. People sure can change in a couple of days. Huh? 
Anyway, let's go to my room. Leo's room is small and crowded. He's got so many guns mounted on the walls, it's hard to tell what colour the walls even are anymore. He used to keep around one or two, but he's become obsessed with collecting them ever since I moved away. These aren't loaded, are they? Why would they be loaded? <laughs> My eyes grow wide as I imagine any subtle movement could knock them off the walls and cause a domino effect of bullets flying everywhere. Of course they aren't loaded. The first rule of collecting guns is you don't leave them loaded. That's dangerous. Not to mention if anyone were to break in, I'd be in danger. Oh, right. Well, that, okay. I noticed how little there actually is to do in his room. So what do you do for fun anyway? He shrugs. Porn. Oh, snake. I look over his computer and see he's got three downloads going at the same time, all about three hours away from being finished. I notice a hole in the wall next to his computer, which worries me. Holy shit, what did you do to your wall? Leo's ears fall flat and he lets out an embarrassed laugh. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, that I saw a video of the wall <laughs> not in a glory hole and I wanted to know what it felt like. I stand up and walk towards the wall. Examining it, Leo stands up too, clearly uncomfortable. That was a few years ago, though. I swear it was only once. Damn, Leo, you're fucking crazy. I poke a few fingers through the hole, realizing he actually would be stuck if he knotted it. Though I won't lie, it is kind of hot. You really think so? I nod, making my way over to the hole. I mean, imagine if that was my face instead. I put my face in front of the hole for effect. I can see Leo forming a bulge already. Hey, that's not fair. You know we can't bang this. <laughs> I look at him. <laughs> why, why not? There's no fun in that. We need to build up suspense first. Why? He rolls his eyes, annoyed with my ignorance. Because that's what they do in the porners to make you watch longer. They hit that sex for the first 80 <laughs> updates and leave you hanging, waiting for it to finally happen. Then they crush your hopes and dreams as everyone either moves apart or dies and nothing ends up happening. Or, if anything does happen, it turns out all twisted and wrong. Oh, it's true though. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, Leo, what kind of porn have you been watching? Leo puts his paw on his chin. <laughs> I think it's called a vision. Or something like that. I sigh and shake my head. For someone so into sex, he sure doesn't have as much experience as he should with this stuff. Ah, it's like listening to an echo. Christ, Leo, you barely knew anything at the sex toy section at the mall. You don't even look at real porn. How do you function? I don't. I shudder when he says that. Has he seriously been doing <laughs> nothing but connecting guns and reading visual novels since I left? I almost feel bad now. Almost. Hey, uh, I'm going outside for a sec to fix my car door. Feel free to do whatever you want on my computer. Yeah, sure, maybe I can find you some actual porn. Leo gives me a quick hug before heading off. Have fun. Leo grabs a gun and walks out of the door with it. Time to go through his search history without his consent. <laughs> I sit down in the chair and look for his web browser. You uses the default browser that every computer comes with, Internet Experience. I cancel his current download so I can download him a better browser. I open up the search window and search for Water Otter. I'm surprised he hasn't been using it already, all things considered. I drum my paws against the desk for a bit as I wait for it to download. As I wait, I open his search history to see what he's been up to. I grin as I first check out his bookmarks. All I find is a random Google search of sweaters. 
<laughs> what? Why would he need a sweater in this town? He must have bookmarked <laughs> I go ahead and look through his search history, occasionally peeking behind me at the door. I see several search results such as, can you water plants with orange juice and can cook without microwave? <laughs> I slaughtered that last one. I must have made him curious yesterday. As I continue to scroll through, I see a couple that catch my eye. <laughs> Stop looking through my search history and don't type otter in my search bar. That's weird. Did he know I was going to do this? I raise my brows and click on the search bar for the history, typing in otter before hitting enter. The results spill down the window, the scroll bar small enough that I have trouble clicking on it to pull it down. Otter. He's just been searching the word otter over and over, so much that the results don't actually fit. Bench I near the bottom of the results and it changes. Damn it, otter, I told you not to type this into my search bar. I jump as I hear Leo on his way to the room and try to close out the window. <laughs> Except it doesn't work, my curiosity is too strong. I need to see the rest of the results. <laughs> one by one as I look through the remaining search results, they seem to be speaking directly to me. <laughs> Silly Otter, why did you stop my downloads, Otter? I like my browser, Otter. You don't need to download Water, Otter. Why don't you listen, Otter? Otter, why you continue to read these? Fix it. This is why I'm the best mechanic in the Fuck, 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 fuck. I mutter under my breath, heart pounding in my chest. I continue to scroll down. Don't be scared, Otto. <laughs> Leo walks in and looks at the screen. Meanwhile, I'm frozen in my seat, caught in the act. Did you? Leo stops mid-sentence. I look back at him. The guilt on my face pretty damn obvious. He bursts out laughing. <laughs> you fell for it. You actually fell for it. <laughs> what? You knew I would do this? Scroll down. One more. It's the last result. I do as instructed. Of course, I knew you'd do this, Otter. You got pranked. <laughs> it's a Leo prank, bro. <laughs> Leo snickers as I stare at the screen, dumbfounded. How did you know? Leo walks over and gives me a pat on the head. I know you, Otter. I set that up a few months ago in case you ever come over again. I'm still shocked he managed to know exactly what I do on his computer, even down to cancelling his downloads to get a better browser. How? We were together for a while, yeah? I paid attention to you and your behaviours. I knew as soon as you saw me using the default browser, you go for download a better one. You are an otter, so obviously you download the water otter. I scratch my head and try to take it all in. I always thought he was kind of dumb. I guess I thought people who carry guns around weren't very smart. But right now he seems to be a full-fledged detective. I didn't know you were smart. You didn't know I was smart, huh? Leo grabs me and suplexes me onto his bed gently. Gobble gobble! My reaction gives Leo a good laugh as he holds onto my waist, not letting me escape from him. His fingers find their way onto my belly, lightly stroking it. He knows I'm ticklish. Ah, okay, okay, you're smart, you're smart! What was that? I didn't quite catch it. He speaks in a low voice into my ears. He gently nips at it, not letting up on his light tickling. I said you were smart, please. Mm. I squirm, unable to take his tease in. His warm breath on my neck, his hot voice, the size difference between us. It's all too much. I struggle against him, but that only causes him to turn it up a notch. You're not getting off that easy. 
He pauses the teasing for a second, giving me just enough time to catch my breath before going all out, finding my, my most sensitive spots to tickle. I'm practically squeaking at this point as I try to roll over. Of course he rolls over with me. So many memories flood back, we used to do this all the time. Stop! The tickling stops and I'm left gasping for air while Leo just looks down at me. <sighs> oh, had enough? Yeah, I just need to, I just need to... Uh... Mm? I reach for his armpits to tickle him back now that he's off guard. He doesn't react at all. I forgot that Leo wasn't ticklish at all. I should know that, since our tickle sessions ended like this every time. Yet I never learned. Maybe I really am too predictable. My disappointment must be obvious because Leo pulls me into a firm hug. I tightly hug him back, feeling at ease with the big wolf. The hug becomes more gentle as I close my eyes, allowing myself to take comfort in Leo's warm embrace. I feel him run a paw across my head, gently petting me. The only sound is that of our breaths. Chase? I hear him call my name, but I don't respond. I want this moment to last. Chase, you're crushing my balls. Did I hear that right? Ow, Chase. Leo pushes back from me, then realises I've had my leg between his the entire time we were cuddling. I was kneeing his crotch by accident. I feel myself flush red for embarrassment before spotting his phone on his desk. Is something wrong? Is that a fucking gun? No. Are you sure? Chase, that's my phone. I'm not sure if he realizes I'm joking, so I stare at him to see if he figures it out. Chase, I told you. Guns have triggers. Phones don't. Ooh. Right. He honestly believes I don't know the difference. Well, this should be a fun way to keep messing with him in future. Do you think all phones are guns or just mine? I pause for a moment, choosing my next words carefully. Mm, just yours. Leo sits up on the bed and folds his arms, looking at me inquisitively. So a phone is only a gun if it belongs to me. I nod. How does that even work? I go quiet, trying to think of what I could say that he would believe. Uh, yes. Leo shrugs before laying down to hug me again. I missed you, Chase. Ah. I can tell he's slightly annoyed at my lack of response. Still, it feels good to know he enjoys having me around. I can swear I hear music playing. It puts me in a calm, relaxed mood. I missed you too. Leo kisses me on the forehead. It's been a while since he's done that. Have you really done nothing but go to work and look at porn since I left? Sometimes I go fishing with Flynn. It's hard to imagine with how badly Leo treats Flynn. Sometimes I think I'm going crazy. I thought you already were. I expect him to laugh at my joke, but he doesn't. I saw you here last week, outside my window. Oh no. Did he spot me stalking him? I've been driving to Echo every week since I left to spy on him and see how he's doing. Sometimes I would leave him notes. Are you sure? Yeah, I just looked out and I saw an otter just standing there. Huh. Do you think it was just another otter? Well... Leo yawns and turns his head towards me, snuffling at my ear. There's only one guy in Remember Dale? He is fat. Wow, I never knew you were one to body shame. What? Well, I just mean it wasn't him because it wasn't his body type. Are you listening to yourself right now, mister? Leo grumbles a bit. Good, I'm taking his mind off of it. Well, you're here now. I wrap my arms and legs around him, touching my nose to his. 
Let's sing a few lyrics from one of our old songs. <laughs> I hear Leo snore, so I give in to my sleepiness and drift off. Feel a presence in the room, and it's angry. Charles! I jolt awake, but I can't open my eyes. Are... are you my conscience? Well, no! Why would you... Darn, I was really hoping I'd get to meet him someday. <laughs> Maybe in the form of a cricket? <laughs> you don't have a conscience. Oh yeah. Darn. I take a look around the room. It looks different. Everything is red. No shit. <laughs> a am I dead? <gasps> am I in a creepypasta? Why did you make everything red? You're asking too many questions. I try to move, but I'm able to. I'm too lazy, and the bed is too comfy. And <laughs> can you just go away? I'm... I'm trying to sleep. Do you know who you're talking to? No. No, and, and I don't care. I'm gonna close my eyes now, okay? I shut my eyes. No longer willing to put up with the ugly red decor of this alternate dimension room, or whatever it is. That fails to stop the voice from scolding me, however. I'm still here. Cool, yeah, me too. I'm not opening my eyes, though. I know if I do, the room will change to an even worse color, like lime green. Hey. You, you want to try playing some better music, dude? This this track totally sucks. What? You mean the creepy atmospheric sounds you're hearing? You're meant to be terrified right now. Yeah, well, your music sucks. That's it. I'm Ruben. You're a joke. I hope you're happy with yourself. I open my eyes. Good. Everything has gone back to normal. I'm not sure what it was that was talking to me, but I've heard you complain enough. Evil spirits will go away. You just have to make yourself not fun to mess with. I turn over onto my other side, try not to wake Leo as I do. He has one arm over me, spooning me. It feels nice. It doesn't take long for I drift off to sleep, feeling safe here with him. To be continued. Terrified! You're supposed to be terrified! <laughs> Don't laugh at me! I am very creepy! I felt spooky. Terrifying. Bizarre, that was terrifying. They go for the music. Be terrified. Very terrified. I'm not gonna lie, after you said that, like, Flynn ran away crying, I wanted to do that so bad. Oh my god. <laughs> Poor, poor baby Flynn. I, I really like how you call it, because I think also, in the actual game, Chase never gets dressed again, either. Uh-huh. <laughs> Just put out here still. Naked. <laughs> all routes. <laughs> On all routes, he just is naked the entire time. Yep. Maybe that's why everyone looks at him weird. It's <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> like waving your dick out. It's not good diplomacy. <laughs> well, he's he's walking around with his sheath out, okay? Dude, if he gets kidnapped, he gets clothes put back on him. <laughs> <laughs> like, no! I've been clothed! I can't believe it. He's forced to put clothes back on him at the end of their depravity. Sleep. Why aren't people talking to me? I'm naked! <laughs> he wants supposed to be attracted to me when I'm naked. Just how it works. 
I want to say the uh, the, the music track, the the E thing. <laughs> I, uh, I... Check sub. I kept forgetting it was there, and I kept dying of laughing every time. <laughs> <laughs> he kept stopping. To, he kept going through it, and if he thought I'd be like playing a game next to him, and I just hear. <laughs> Oh, did, 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 did you like did, did you like the singing along with the lyrics? Yes, yeah. <laughs> when I was younger, I used to do that for like I could do that for a full minute. Oh no! It would drive my sisters crazy. You could almost do it for about a tenth of the time of one of Leo's favorite music tracks. <laughs> <laughs> Just <sighs> wait. Where did you even get that? Get what? I hate it. Oh, that track, yeah, it was oh, terrible. I created it. That was musician. fucking terrible. <laughs> My husband is a musician, and I feel like everyone should be proud of his talent. <laughs> to play beautiful music. Yeah, of your music. Everyone said it was beautiful. Yeah. It captured... I mean, I the beat was pretty good. <laughs> it captured of Leo's relationship. It's both beautiful and terrifying. I don't know how to describe it. I don't either. <laughs> you know, the like the first like two updates, like Jenna was like a total idiot, but it's like this time she actually sort of fit in, but she was still an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> was it just slapping a collar and leash on TJ? <laughs> like I don't know if. Uh... And this this totally. This totally actually puts into perspective that they make Flynn into the bad guy when he's really not. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> They're all just like, you're such a bully. I can't believe Flynn poked TJ in the eye. That image was edited by Anime Reason. Uh, he was like, yeah, I'll go ahead and edit it. And I was like, do whatever you want with it. I will make it work. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, Zara, you gotta do 0 0.5 right now. <laughs> Midstream uh, got hey, edited midstream for us all to see. Bye bye, Miko. Right. Thank you. Bye, Miko. Thanks for joining. I texted you. Uh, yeah, uh, you know, at first.